So I'd like to introduce uh, Merlin next. Uh, Merlin is a Dutch composer and founder of the Turn Club, a lab for arts and society. He's received a UNESCO award and collaborated with the Kronos Quartet and the New York Philharmonic. He worked in refugee camps and across dividing lines in Cyprus, Palestine and Syria, involved with children, with local communities and professional musicians. Merlin's uh, performance is titled The Urgent Need of Your Artist Mindset. So Merlin, if you're ready, uh, humbly hand over to you. Hey there. Hey, everybody. It's uh, exciting to be here and great to see you all. Um, what matters now? I think we need uh, to really uh, ask the question, what matters less? Because we are men and people who want to make, to build, to produce, to create. And that brought us to a world that's really full of stuff. Too much. So what happens less? And if you ask people who are engaged in social or health issues, they say like, okay, we have too much stress, too much pressure, too much competition, uh, too much workload. And if you um, ask people who are involved in a relationship with the nature and the more the, the perspective of the, the living world, they will say like, okay, we have too much production, too much pollution, too much traffic. And um, well, this is of course how our whole economy, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, has it like this, all this big engine that we have built with all of us. And the big ridiculous thing is that it has been a huge progress, a huge development of what we did as humankind, but we didn't succeed to make, made, uh, to make this equal uh, for all of us to become more healthy, uh, to become more happy, actually. And uh, we are in some way, many ways we're stuck. And then we got a pandemic and that made for many of us, to, uh, yeah, our, our existence much more complex and complicated and stressful and so on. But we also could practice with less. And we could see, of course, well, we have shared a lot of these stories about the opportunities and the time and the, the, literally the breath that our living world could, could take when our, the human engine was on pause for a while. But of course, this was very painful for a lot of us, especially out of the Western world. Uh, you have people who are, well, it's really rough what happens if this whole global economic engine comes to a standstill. So it's very logical that we really desire to, to go back, that this, this pandemic is over. We can go back to a world. But that also would be a disaster for the world itself. So I feel we have this huge, huge dilemma at this moment. We, we want to go back or we want to go back to normal, but we cannot, we should not do that. Mm -hmm. And then of course, I see a lot of voices all around in the news and the newspapers about sustainability and a green uh, new uh, deal and let's build back better. Of course, I agree. But how can we make sure that we actually feel a desire? Not a desire for more stuff and green stuff instead of polluting stuff, uh, because that's just also in this frame of mind that, that there is so much more and we need more and more and more. No, how can we desire less? How can we actually see, experience the beauty of less? And I see this as the biggest challenge to make it desirable to do less, to produce less. And my question is, uh, can less be beautiful? Can we experience it? Can we play with it? Can we feel it? How it would be to have less income or less stuff or less well, uh, opportunities maybe. And can we actually imagine it? And then, these three things, beauty, play, and imagination. Actually, I'm talking about the toolbox of the artist. 
And I feel um, the artist has a lot to contribute, not so much in the pro products of the artist, not in the performances or the, the, the artworks, but in the mindset. Can we make this mindset? Yeah. Uh, can we share this mindset? Can we make this like uh, well, something that can, can grow, that people can feel beauty, play and imagination as part of their way to deal with yeah, this whole changing world? Well, I'm a composer of music. And it's of course that I, am, I, I love to, to make music, to make things, um, but it's not so much that uh, I can apply this in normal life, the, this artist mindset. That really takes uh, a lot of exercise. And I feel that art should also yeah, break out of the fact that it's obsessed with status, obsessed with products, obsessed with results and find a way to reinvent them like how that artist can reinvent themselves as being an example of someone who is living an artist mindset. Um, and I had been thinking of an example to share with you. And then I had to think of a moment when I was performing in Cyprus, and you know Cyprus is a divided island. There is the, the Greek South and the Turkish North, and since the Civil War, they can't, they, they're, they're divided by, by a physical fence, mines, a buffer zone. And I'd like to show you a short video of a project that I did. And first I was in Cyprus to deliver a concert, but then I changed my mind, and I thought I started talking with people and asking them, what does it mean? Can we reunite the island? Can we make peace? And I discovered they're allergic for this word, peace. And um, um, let me show you uh, a, few, yeah, a few images of, um, uh, of what happened. After a lot of talking, a lot of imagination, a lot of listening actually to, um, uh, to all the people there. Um, here is a picture of the buffer zone. You see the military uh, barriers, there is guards everywhere. This is the buffer zone. The, the most interesting that, illustration that I can offer of the division in this island is right over there between those two points. That is the ultimate metaphor. It is frozen in time since 1974 shop fronts, a street that was thronged with people and no longer is. But this is an empty space. Since the Civil War, like 40 years ago. And here's our performance. I put musicians on the rooftops. I realized that I just should be open and listening to what's actually happening. And then I heard that even the things that went different from my plans actually worked out great. <laughs> So then the whole project was no longer my composition or my plan, but it was really something that we shared with this whole community. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
Okay, this is a fragment of the of the whole uh, movie, a film, and I will I'll post the link. But um, what you cannot see is that it was a one-hour performance, with a lot of music, but there was also moments that it didn't follow my plan, and there were <laughs> silences, and the musicians didn't see a sign or they didn't get a cue. And in the silence, that was actually the most beautiful moment because all these people who were there, they were just listening. To the place, to, to to the sounds of 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 the now and the here, and later they told me that was so impressive because usually this place is full of tension, full of chaos, full of uh, conflict. But to be there and to actually listen, it became full of opportunities or full of possibilities. And for me, this is already uh, 15 years ago, but since then, I always thought that the most powerful thing that we all can do, and especially artists, is to create this type of space where the silence or the being there, listening, makes us open to see what's the possibility. And I think we really need that this time where we will have to strive for, yeah, for another, um, yeah, another way of living, living. Good, thank you so much. <laughs>